Praise the Lord. Welcome to our service today. We are Abundant Grace Church. And I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. What a blessing for us to be here. Matter of fact, what a blessing it is to come into your home, so wherever you are, whether you're, you're on an airplane, whether you're riding in a car, and you're watching us on your uh, tablet or whatever. Praise God for you today. Amen? Today we have a great message. The title of today is Two Rules to Change Your Life. I will be coming from the book of Romans chapter 12 and I will be covering verses 1 and 2. My beloved, this is such a rich chapter here, Romans chapter 12. And I pray that God speak to your heart today. I speak to your spirit that you will have a changed life. If you are going in an adverse direction, I pray that you get back and go in the right direction. My beloved, because when we leave this life, there's only two directions you go in. Either to heaven, which is up, or hell, which is down. But I I pray in Jesus name that when you leave this life you would have prepared and you will enter into the kingdom of God because you have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Romans from the King James Version reads that's verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And the contemporary English version renders it. Dear friend God is good so I beg you to offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice. Pure and pleasing. That's the most sensible way to serve God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 reads, firstly from the King James Version, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the contemporary English version renders it, don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My beloved, do you feel as if you are on a road that will eventually lead to a dead end? Are you tired of trying to attain the riches of this life only to fail time after time? Well, you're not alone. For all of us have been down that road before. God, today's message, I hope, will bring hope into your life that you can be successful if you put your total faith and trust in God through his son, Jesus Christ, who we know to be the Savior of of all mankind. My beloved, there is only one way to heaven. It's not through a church. It's not through good works. It's not through a ministry. It's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's through repenting and asking Jesus Christ to come into your life, to save you, to wash you and cleanse you in his precious blood. That blood that was shed for all mankind on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. As a matter of fact, it was instituted in the Garden of Eden the minute Adam and Eve sinned. So what we're going to do, first off, I'm going to back up a verse. I'm going to go to the previous chapter, and I'm going to read Romans chapter 11 and verse 36, which reads as follows. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. That's the King James Version. Got a contemporary English version around this. Everything comes from the Lord. All things were made because of him and will return to him. Praise the Lord forever. Amen. What a rich verse. When you get into the word of God and you ask God to to reveal truth to you. He'll do it. The Bible is so rich. See, a Bible isn't meant to sit closed on your living room table or your kitchen table. It is meant to be read. That way you will be edified. You will be touched. You will grow. You will have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who God is, who Jesus is, what God wants for you, what God has for you through his son, Jesus Christ. So here it speaks of, for of him. This expression doubtless means that he is the original source and fountain of all blessings. True blessings come from God and not from man. Now, God uses man to pass on blessings. God uses people to donate to ministries, to give to the poor, to give to the hurting. God uses people, but understand that everything comes from God. That That is why when God tells us to do something, we need to do our best and not just give any old thing. I can remember back when they had the storm, Katrina come in and we had a place set up for people to bring clothes and things. People brought bags and clothes, bags of clothes, and just threw them there. And when we looked at the clothes, hardly anything was fit to be worn by anybody. It was dirty, paint all over them, dust, moth, uh, spiders, shoes that were worn with holes in them. We just had to throw them in a the dumpster. The majority of the clothes went 
into the dumpster because people brought what they wanted to get rid of it's like they cleaned their attic out and got rid of all the junk or the garage these are things that people wouldn't even buy in the yard sale so that's how bad it was and we had we ended up throwing a majority of the donations that we received into the trash dumpster so know that god wants you to give your best so here's the creator of all Here's a rich fountain from which all streams of existence have their beginning. My beloved, God is the source of everything. You know, Satan tries to mimic God. He, he wanted to be like the most high God. But God wouldn't have anything to do with it. And he cast him out. Give your best. And he requires your best. Give him all you can. Do a good job. When you're helping somebody, help them the best that you can. When you're talking to somebody, talk to them the best that you can. My beloved, do the best that you can in the name of Jesus Christ. And watch the blessings of God flow into your life. Because when you give to the kingdom of God, you give to the hurting, the thirsty, the hungry, the naked, the sick, those that are imprisoned, God blesses you bountifully. He multiplies your blessings back in different ways. Now, I'm not saying if you give $10, you're going to get tenfold back. That's not what I'm saying. God blesses in many different ways that, that are unbelievable, that you have no idea. But do everything that you do to the praise and glory of God. Amen? Praise God. Know that when you talk about for Him, you also talk about to Him. What's it mean to give God something? When you give Him your best through given to somebody else or you give in his name you give in God's name you give a gift in Jesus name you are giving it to God as your reasonable right service you are giving it in the name of the Lord so you are giving it to him see everything goes to God first and then it passes on so do your best give your best to God give your prayer time give your life give your strength give everything to God because it's supposed to go to him you give it to God he blesses you back and then what do you do everybody you bless others with it now just think about the odds okay let's think about the odds for one minute if god requires 10 percent of your first fruits that means that you have 90 percent. it's a blessing right off the bat right you, you have 90 percent pocket money to live your life to help others so your blessings multiply my beloved you're getting 90 percent you can try to invest money and get 90 percent go put money in the bank try to get 90 percent of your money back and in interest it won't happen your great blessings are when you give to god you give to his kingdom you give to his work amen, amen. so remember that all things everything that is seen and unseen everything that ever exists was created by god god uses people to to do things to create things but they could only create things out of something that was already created they can only create something out of something that was already created or you wouldn't have anything to work with you were created god uses you to create something out of something that he already created see whatever is in the mind of god is already done do you think that it's surprising to god that computers were created no it's, it didn't surprise god nothing surprises god because if god didn't want it to happen it wouldn't happen and whenever you make something or or we say create something that has to be made out of something that was already created or it's nothing it can't exist and because of that he is to get the glory right the honor and the praise okay for all these things praise and honor for how long forever isn't that amazing forever forever for eternity it never ends so let me give you some points here eight quick points just short so you don't get writer's cramp okay point one god is infinitely wise two knowing that we ought to be humble because know that everything comes from god three it is our duty to submit to god four god is the creator and proprietor of all things he created he owns it it's his and he formed the universe for what reason to declare his glory what happened when he rested he looked at it and saw it was good whatever god created is good sick god has a system of morality and expects us to maintain that morality he expects us to be true to that seven whenever a soul gets saved salvation let's say salvation is to glorify god in Christ Jesus and not to glorify us for bringing a soul into the kingdom because if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit the people wouldn't be drawn correct mm. 
Hey, it is our duty to seek the honor of a holy God. We ought to let God lift us up and honor us and not man. God is the one that must lift us up. We don't honor ourselves. We don't take the credit for anything. I've never taken credit for a soul. People have asked me, how many souls did you save on your mission trip? None. I didn't save anybody. I can't save anybody. All I do is present the gospel. I always honored God because without him and the spirit drawing the lost, they will never get saved. Without the spirit giving me the wisdom on what to say and how to pray, people would have never gotten saved. So it, all the honor and all the glory belong to an infinite God who is all-powerful, all-knowing. That's where we get John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So know that everything happens because God permits it to happen. God created it. He owns it. It's his. He has the patent on it. And no one can ever change that. Over here, you have people trying to steal patent. You can't steal the glory from God. God shares his glory with no one. Okay? So let's move right on to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, which says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And the uh, contemporary English version renders it, Dear friends, it is good, or God is good. So I beg you to offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice, pure and pleasing. That's the most sensible way to serve God. So when we're beseeching God, what are we doing? We're begging God. We are petitioning God. We go to God. So Paul is actually begging us to do what? Attain the mercies of God. Paul is enforcing that it is only through God that we can have anything. We must ask God. Now, God can give us anything without us asking. A lot of times he gives us things because we don't know what. What to pray for as we should because we don't have the knowledge, right? We don't know how to be healed of a certain disease. We don't know what to do. We just don't have it. So what if God says that we are to pray? And when we pray, God gives us the answer. So there is a method that is to be observed by us. And that method is to continue to ask, seek, and knock. And when we ask and we seek, God will move. But know this one thing, my beloved. It's in his time. Some people say, oh, hurry, God. You don't know what's going on here. But God knows what's going on. He knows the beginning and the end. That's why we are to seek him. And that we are to present our bodies, not just part of our body. That's why Jesus said, if your hand caused you to sin, cut it off. What, what he is saying is that control yourself. Control yourself in areas that you have problems with. If you continue to look at things that you shouldn't, control what you see. If you listen to things that you shouldn't be listening to, control what you listen to. If you're using your body for things other than honoring God, like in marriage, like have a relationship out of the state of matrimony, you need to contain yourself. But beloved, God gives you the strength to resist temptation, but you must want to be set free from that temptation. You know what they always say about the second look, right? With the second thought, or when we start pondering something, or meditating on it, guess what? It becomes a reality to you. So you need to guard your hearts, your minds, and your spirits from the things that are adverse to the Word of God. So you need to present your whole body to God, dedicated to God, and be that living sacrifice. You know, when the high priest, they would offer sacrifices. They had to kill it first, kill the animal, and then present it. But now we can present our bodies, which means deny ourselves, sacrifice ourselves, do without, do without them desires that cause us to sin, take control over ourselves. That's what we need to do. It's about control and dedicating ourselves to God. Let our body be a living sacrifice. Let our body be a, a tool, a vessel, an instrument for God to use, to show his goodness, to show his love, mercy, and respect, okay? And this is only what is required by God on an everyday basis. See, God's going to Killjoy. He doesn't want to kill all your fun. He doesn't say spend all day in church when you feel like you want to go out and take your family or spend time with your family, go somewhere, or you want to go fishing and go on vacation. You say you can't because you got to be in church. No, you need to go spend your time with God and you need to spend your time with your family. You need to enjoy it. All this was created so you could enjoy it. The oceans, the mountains, even the deserts, these things were created for you to enjoy. So you don't have to sit in church every Sunday. You can praise God. You can walk and praise God. You could be in a boat fishing and praise God. But remember that God requires that you put him first in everything. And when you put him first in everything, then everything falls into place. Let's move on to uh, verse 2, Romans 12 
And verse 2. Which says, verse from the King James Version, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Contemporary English Version renders it, Don't be like the people of this world. Let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to Him. So don't be conformed. Don't take on these lifestyles that aren't of God. Don't follow every fad that comes down the pike. You don't have to conform to the world. See, what has happened with the church, the church has brought the world into the church and made it part of the church. But in reality, the church has become part of the world. And that doesn't work. And I heard pros and cons in both directions. You got to keep up with the times. You have to do this to attract people. No, you got to preach the word to attract people. Amen. You got to be true. You got to be a witness. You got to be an instrument for God to use to attract the world. You have to be different than what is in the world in order to pull them in. You don't have to bring the, the world in to the church to show that you like the world. How can people tell the difference? They can't tell the difference. You need to show them something different. You see, they knew that there was something different about Jesus. They knew he wasn't like the other teachers. He wasn't like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He spoke truth, and he spoke it with power, authority. And that's what we need to do, not be conformed to this world. Don't put forth the fashion of the world in your life. Don't appear like you're part of the world. In any habit, manner, dress, or style of living, you can't. I see this stuff all the time. Just turn on the TV. You can see people. You can't tell the difference. They might even be singing a praise song, but you can't tell the difference to them and the, and the people that are in the world. That's not the way it should be. you got to come out from amongst them and be separated. This world means, you know, just those that aren't part of the kingdom of God, the world. Those that follow their flesh is what they're talking about. Don't follow your flesh or every wind of doctrine or every whim of thought, but be separated, my beloved. And be ye transformed, changed, transformed, changed. The way you think, the way you look, the way you act, change, my beloved. It means change your forms, change your habits, Change your direction. Change your external appearance. Renew your mind. Change the way you think. And when you do, and it lines up with the Word of God. See, don't transform yourself into the world, but take yourself out of the world and transform yourself into the things that are of the kingdom. By what? By the renewing, by a new way of thinking, by a, way, a new way of showing your feelings, a new way of doing things, a new way of addressing others, renewing, changing the old ways, coming out from the world. It's like, what happens, let's just say, when you renew your license, your driver's license, you go in, they take another picture, right? It's not the same old picture. Take another picture, and what do they do? They give you another date. Yeah, if you don't change your driver's license, you can't drive on the old one. You can't say, well, I'm just going to use my old driver's license. No, you have to renew your license when the time is up. Then after that, you're going to have to renew your license again four years later. Then after that, you're going to have to renew it another four years later. And this is the way this was. We are constantly in that state of renewal, changing growing, seeding boundaries. So be transformed. You can't think like you did when you were a little boy, when you were a little kid, or you're playing midget baseball. You can't play professional baseball like you did when you were playing midget football. You can't do that. You have to progress. You have to renew. You have to change. You have to become like new again. But in this case, it's renewing of your mind, changing the way you think, your intellect, and what you think in your mind is what's going to control your body. So you think of spiritual things, you're going to treat your body from a spiritual standpoint. You're going to obey the commandments of God, the commandments of Jesus Christ, because your mind has changed. You no longer think the same. Your mind, your heart changes. You love one another. You love more people. You have compassion for people. You don't think like the used to, well, let him do it. Or they'll get, or let them, who cares about them? No, you change. You have a heart. You take on what? The mind of God. You give yourself like Christ gave himself. You're willing to die for Jesus Christ. It changes. My beloved, when you renew your mind, things start to look different. Your affections are different. You have feel different feelings for different things now than you did before. And why do you do that? That you may prove what is good. That you may show that the old way wasn't any good. Now the new way is better. So you will show that the things of God 
or good because you are doing the will of God. And you know that the things you were doing in the past were hurting people. Maybe you offended people. Maybe you used foul language to people. Maybe you shunned people. Maybe you put your nose up in the air because you thought you were better than people. Maybe you boasted. Maybe you walked in private. Now you walk and you meditate. You love everybody. You compliment people. You change because your heart changed. You had a heart transplant because Jesus Christ came into your heart and he took over. So now you're not the same. So you do things that is good and you do things that are perfect, which means are free from defect, are free from stain or injury. You do the things that are good. You turn from your old ways. You turn from doing things in the flesh where somebody some, said something bad to you before, you want to punch them, right? Now, say, so, okay, I love you anyway, even though you said that bad, but I love you anyway. I forgive you. And that way, you will be acceptable to God. What you do will be acceptable to God because you became separated from the world. And now people see that there's a change and you have changed. You changed mentally. And believe it or not, you'll change physically too. When, when I see people that are heavy burdened, they live a lifestyle of sin, you know, debauchery. Look at the bodies, shriveled up. Look at people that, that drink a lot or alcoholics. Their, their faces are all broke out. They're saggy. I mean, they, they don't look good. They don't have that color in them because they got liver problems. They're sick. But when you change your life around and you get better, you heal. So you heal spiritually, mentally, and physically. You're a whole new creation. And to be a whole new creation, you can't do it on your own. You need help. So when you do things that are acceptable to God, God will help you. He's not going to go against his word. He's going to stand on this word no matter what. And he expects you to be true to the word of God. And if you want to be acceptable to God and praise God, you have to have a relationship with him. When you have this relationship with him, you will be genuine. And the things of God won't be a burden to you anymore because you cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Do you want to be set free from a lifestyle that you have right now in the world? Do you want to be set free from the temptations of this world? You can resist temptation with Christ in your life. Temptation is going to come now. It's going to come whether you're Christian or not. But you can fight that temptation because you will have the right to put on the full armor of God. If you want to have that power, if you want to change your life, you won't be able to do it yourself. You're going to need the help from God. And the only way you can get that help from God, true help from God, and stand firm and be strong is to have Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And if you want that today, I want to pray for you today. I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance. We have to call it for what it is, repentance. And when you repent and accept Christ as your Savior and Lord, you can stand on Romans 12, 1 and 2. You can stand on the whole word of God from Genesis to the book of Revelation. And you can take authority over all the power of the enemy in Jesus' name. So if you want to do that today, please pray this prayer with me today. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. He's not sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus is alive. You must believe that. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, and I believe it. You want me to change my life. And I heard the preacher today, the only way I could change my life is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, your son. I want to do that today. I'm tired of living the life that I live. I want to be renewed in my spirit. I want to have the strength to fight temptation, to transform my life, to love my wife, love my family again, to humble myself, ask for forgiveness, bring everything back together again like it like it was in the beginning. I've gone astray. I went to church when I was younger, but I shy from church over the years and I catered to the world. I want to change that today. I heard about the two rules to change your life from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. And I want to change today. Therefore, I am repenting of my sinfulness. I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, Father God, and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I don't want to go to hell if I should die soon. Well, I don't want to go to hell when I die. I don't want any of my family members to go to hell. I want to be with them in heaven. And I ask you to save them too. But I know they have to make their own declaration of faith in your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that through my witness and my transformation, that they will want to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and would also. I pray that you lead me and guide me to be that vessel to tell others that there is a way to go to heaven is through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I believe that Jesus Christ is God, came to this world, was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. That's where he is right now, at your right hand. I believe this with my heart. 
that I confess it with my mouth. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. I love if you said that prayer today. Let me be the first to welcome you in the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then what I want you to do is please contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. That's abundant grace at att.net and just earmark a pastor and tell me what happened. You can also contact us through our websites at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Midlothian is spelled M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-A-N. You can continue to watch us on YouTube. We have many videos under Abundant Grace Church. My name is Bishop Ramon Di Maria. We're on Spreaker.com under Bishop Full Gospel New Life. And we're on Ustream.tv. You can contact us there by the same way. Or, matter of fact, you can just Google us, Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, or put my name in Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today. Our message has been two rules to change your life from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Thank you for being with us today. And please, we have many videos on YouTube. Just watch them and grow. And don't forget, contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.